Hey y'all, I'm Regina. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're rekindling some thrifted junk that I found at the Goodwill. So first we have this little jewelry box or trinket box, little storage box. It was originally from Home Goods and it was like $13. And I see that $2.99 tag. I don't know if I paid $2.99 or $3.99, but I'm guessing that I didn't see the $2.99 at the time. And I probably did pay $3.99 for it. Now it's in really good shape. Um, there's like one marred section down at the bottom left hand corner, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to start with pulling off the bottom and then I'll take it down into the basement and give it a good sanding to scuff up all the sides. And then I'll wipe it back before moving on to the next step. So I have these little wooden feet that I found um, on Amazon and I will definitely link those below. And what we're going to do, of course, is we're just going to take our tight bond quick and thick and some hot glue and we'll get those glued on. I like to use both glues so that the tight bond will give it a longer you know, more permanent hold and the hot glue gives us an immediate stick so that we can continue with our project. Once I get all four feet attached, then I'm just going to go in with a wet wipe and gently wipe back that excess glue that squeezed out from underneath. Once I let those dry for a little bit, then I'm going to go in with my Waverly chalk paint and Snow White. Of course, I will link these down below, anything that I'm using today. And we're just going to give it a nice even coat. I'm going to start at the bottom with where the feet are so I can make sure to get around all of those little details that are cut into the wood. Typically, I think I'd like to remove a lot of the hardware, but the inside with it being covered with fabric, I wasn't able to get to the screws without having to go in and, you know, removing the fabric, which didn't really seem like that big of a deal to me. So I just went ahead and painted over top of it. Once I got the outside finished, then I'm going to go on the inside and I'm going to paint the entire thing. At first I was just going to paint around the perimeter, but then I decided um, that I wanted to try something else. So I went ahead and just put a thick coat over that fabric. You know, the fabric really sucked up that paint. And I'm not going for an entire full coverage because I am going to go back in and distress it. And I like the look. So I don't think it needed, you know, to be stark white. Once it was dry, I go in with a really fine grit sandpaper with my little finger sander and I just go over the entire piece just to kind of work out some of those brush strokes that you could see. 
and where the, uh, you know, where all the corners are and the raised edges to kind of smooth those out a little bit. Then I'm going to go in with a more coarse sandpaper and I'm going to distress all of the edges. Once I'm happy with the distressing, I'm just going to take a wet paper towel or you could take a wet wipe um, and just wipe back some of that dust so that when we move to the next step, we're not going to have any issues down the road. So now that it's dry and I'm happy with the distressing, I'm taking these uh, Redesign with Prima MIDI labels and I can't decide at first. I'm looking at both the vintage labels in two and three and I love the color of both, but I do end up working with the number two. I'm just gonna go in and pick two, one for the very front and then one for the um, upper lid on the inside. So with labels, you're just going to, um, the rub on labels, you're just going to cut them out and you're going to lay them down. But remember when you lay it down, you're committed because of the stickiness that's on the back. So once you get it down, you're going to take the tool that they give you inside of the package and you're just going to scrape along all of the design. It doesn't take much um, force or pressure just a little bit and once you feel like you've done it enough you can start peeling it up and if you see that a little bit is still sticking to the backing just place it back down and continue to rub that so once I get it rubbed down I start to peel it away and once I get the entire carrier sheet pulled away then I'm just going to take it and rub it gently over the entire um, transfer so that it's stuck down and there's no bubbles and that's what's called burnishing. I just repeat the step for the second transfer. Now I want to thank the folks over at burlapfabric.com for sending me this swoon-worthy damask fabric. I absolutely love it. It's so shabby chic and can tie into my bedroom decor perfectly and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. Okay, now I know you guys know what we're getting ready to do with this. The first thing, we're going to take a couple of squares and we're going to fold them over and then we're going to cut out half a heart. And since I'm freehanding this, I definitely have to go back in and trim it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna take some hot glue and we're just going to go ahead and glue around and make a little seam around 75% of the heart. And once we get all but that little piece that's still open, we're going to go ahead and take some um, polyfill fiber fill and go ahead and stuff him. After he's fattened up, go ahead and close his seam. My little guy was a little wonky after I closed his seam, so I just kind of gave him a little massage and he turned out fine. 
Okay, so now we're gonna take some more of this fabric and we're going to cut it into a square. And then at the top of the square, you're going to cut at angles so that it looks like you're cutting out a little house. Now again, I'm just freehanding this, so if you want to, you know, get a ruler out and a pencil or pen, then go right ahead. But what I did was I just completely cut it out and then trimmed as needed. And now I'm going to go in with some hot glue and I'm just going to take the hot glue up to where it starts to angle on both sides. Once that's done, then I'm going to go ahead again with my polyfill fiber fill and just stuff him. I'm not going to like fully stuff him so he's like super fat like a pillow. I'm just going to stuff him to, to give him some volume. And once I'm happy with that, then I'm just going to push that down a little bit and at the rectangle portion of um, our little house, I'm going to go ahead and fold over the flap, put a bead of glue and seal that. Now I'm going to take the top portion, the angled portion, and I'm going to glue that together. Now once that's done, I'm going to flip it over and then glue that down. And what that looks like is a sweet little envelope or a little love letter. Now I go into my stash and I want to put a little seal on there. So I'm just kind of going through my, my bedazzled jewelry and deciding which little piece that I want to use. I decide on this little fella and I go ahead and get him glued down. So sweet. Okay, now we have this wire jute that I got from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cut a piece to create a circle. Once I get a circle, then I'm just gonna kind of uh, wrap it around and put some glue on it so that it doesn't come apart. So I get that glued down and now I'm going to take some of this uh, baby's breath swag and I'm going to pull off um, some multi-dimensional colors. So I'm going to pull some light, I'm going to pull some dark and what we're going to do is we're going to create a little wreath. Super simple, right? So we're just going to glue all of these little pieces down onto our jute. And we're going to layer them until we're happy with the way that our little wreath works or looks. So now I want to create a little bow for the wreath. So I'm going to take this ribbon that I have. Um, I found it on Amazon, I think. I will definitely link it as, uh, below as well. But it's like nice cotton ribbon and it frays really nice. Like it's great for shabby chic decor. So I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces that are the same size and then I'll slit um, a little cut in the middle and I'll rip that down and it'll be completely frayed as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shabby bow and you're going to take your two pieces like a six inch piece and you're just going to fold those over where the uh, center portion overlaps one another. So I'll do the pink, the ivory, and then back to the pink. Then I'm going to take um, a piece of the pink and the ivory and I'm going to lay that over top of my three loops and just tie a knot. And then when you go in and you fluff this out, you have like the perfect uh, loopy shabby bow. Super cute.
I'm just going to get that placed on the wreath where I want it and then put a nice gob of um, hot glue and get that put down. Okay, what do you think? We have our little vignette decor box. I love the way that it looks like it's a little older because of the black showing through. Um, I think it turned out great. It's super cute. Love the little envelope. I styled it, you know, just put my perfume in there and some pearls. And then I added the little wreath at the top and a little bird. You know, you could put anything in here that you wanted to, but the idea here is to switch it up for your decor. Doesn't have to be shabby chic, but definitely you find these at the uh, Goodwill or thrift stores all the time. Okay, so now I have this frame that I rekindled in a previous video and I'll link that video below. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the backing and take a random piece of cardboard and just trace out the pattern because I want to create a new piece to sit inside because the glass got used with the other project. Okay, so we get that cut out and then I'm gonna take some Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going to give this two coats. I want to um, just lighten up the background because I'm gonna put something over top of this and I don't want it to darken what we're putting over top. And since I'm so impatient, I'm going to take my blow dryer and um, blow dry in between the coats and then I'm ready to rock and roll again. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm taking this fabric and this is the reason I wanted the fabric. I'm going to lay it out where I want it because I know, you know, I want the design to show. I want it to be like the center of the show. So I trace it out and then I cut it out. And what I'll do is once I get it cut out, I'm going to take some um, spray adhesive, but the one that I'm showing you, it didn't work. I don't know if it was old or what, but I ended up going in with my um, Gorilla Glue spray adhesive to get that sprayed on and my fabric transferred. So then I just make sure I have it upright the way that I want it and I pop the backing back into the frame. Go ahead and say it. So pretty. Oh my goodness. Already. So excited. Okay. So I found this wood medallion or, you know, it's a, it's a molded wood piece. And what I'm going to do is again with my white paint, I'm going to go in and give this two coats. Now I will link these below. When you're using them, wood is so dry i mean it really sucks that paint in i was thinking i mean if you can see it looks really pretty like the coverage looks really good but after sitting for a little bit i noticed that the wood grain was coming back through so i did have to end up giving it two coats just stop it right now how pretty is that Oh my goodness. Okay, so I go ahead and I put a generous amount of hot glue and I get it glued down to our fabric piece. Now I'm going to take my all-in-one paint in the color Peony and I'm going to take these little vintage keys that I found, I believe on Amazon, I'll link those below as well. And I'm just gonna give these two coats. And again, because I'm so impatient, I'm breaking out the little hair dryer and I'm going to dry in between and then after so that we can continue to move on with our project.
Once they're dry, I'm going to take my fingernail and this little, um, I don't know, needle tool. I, it, was, it was at the Dollar Tree. You can find it there. Um, but you can use anything to scrape this paint off. Actually, it came off really easy. I wanted it to give a distressed look. And so I just worked at it all around until I really liked the way that it looked. Now I'm going to take some of our cotton ribbon again and in the same colors and I'm just going to tie it through the keys and tie a little knot. So I just kind of fool with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start um, ripping the shreds into the thicker pieces into thinner pieces and then I put some hot glue on I get it glued down and then I go in and I'm not super happy with it so I start to trim it off you know just the way that you want it to look you you go ahead and fiddle with it I'm super happy with the way this turned out I love the fabric um, and it turned out better than I was hoping for, so I'm really excited. So tell me, what do you think? So shabby chic, I think it's beautiful.